All right, here with Phil Tate to uh, go through Wayne Maxwell's championship winning G6R1000. Phil, take us through the technicalities of the machine. Okay, well here we have um, the Australian spec uh, superbike that Wayne Maxwell won the championship on uh, in 2013 this year. Um, starting from the front of the bike, we're basically, um, our rules don't allow us to change the, the discs or the brake um, calipers, the brake uh, master cylinder can be changed. We're using different pads in here. We um, quite often use, uh, depending on the circuit, we use the Brembo pads or um, we've got a couple other choices in SBS and, uh, and Vezera even at some tracks the boys like. Um, but it depends on whether they like a, a initial bite or a, a less bite and, and better grip at the end for trail braking into turns. But essentially, this is all GSX R1000 standard equipment, OEM equipment, brakes, discs, wheels. So moving back onto the master cylinder, we use a Brembo adjustable um, master cylinder, um, RCS 19. Um, gives the guys good feel. We've even uh, using, we started cutting the levers in here because down at Phillip Island we found our data was showing that the wind was pushing the front brake on. So that little slot that you might notice there in the, um, in the front brake lever is enough to let the wind through and not pull the brake on, um, which was uh, yeah, quite amazing for our data to pick that up. Um, I even uh, questioned Wayne once, I said, what are you doing pulling the brake on down the straight? <laughs> he said, no, it's not that, it's just the wind, but so uh, that fixed that. Moving back from there, oh, while we're here, we have uh, our forks, we're using the Olin's um, cartridges uh, internally in the forks. This is a, called a Nick system, it's a 30 mil cartridge. We have um, rebound in the right leg and compression in the left leg. This system is uh, widely used throughout the world and um, you know we've, we have gas cartridge forks as well. But the boys seem to think that they, they like the feel of these um, 30 mil Nicks. They're not pressurised fork, but um, they give them good feel. Um, and and it, it works extremely well. Triple clamps are all standard OEM equipment from Suzuki, um, and so is all, yeah, all the triple clamps. The offset all is um, is standard Suzuki. The chassis is all standard Suzuki. We're not allowed to modify that either. Um, all the fuel tank and all auxiliary parts concerned with the fuel tank is all standard OEM equipment. Moving on to the engine, we have um, we're allowed to change the camshafts valve springs, valve retainers. We're allowed to port the cylinder head with um, removal of material but no adding. So we can't weld up inlet ports or, or fill them with epoxy. We can only work with what we start with. So it's an OEM head that we, um, we flow and, and fiddle around with. Valves are all standard. Valve seats are all standard. So um, the, the pistons are all OEM but we're allowed to fly cut the, uh, uh, the valve pockets to allow for the, the large cams which we're running in this engine at the moment which is Yoshimura's latest design cam and working extremely well. So it, um, this engine at the moment, um, Wayne's winning engine, this is the fastest one we've built. They all seem to be work around the 216, but this engine's 218 horsepower at the rear wheel on a Dynajet Dyno. So it's, um, it's quite a powerful engine. Um, so in that we've got Yoshimura clutch springs um, uh, in, in the clutch itself, still using the original OEM basket and back torque uh, slipper clutch arrangement. It just has different settings after you fit the Yoshimura equipment into it. So that OEM clutch is more than sufficient enough to handle um, you know, in excess or up towards 220 horsepower at the rear wheel. Um, all the crankshaft is all standard, the crank cases are all standard OEM equipment. All the connecting rods to the pistons are all standard OEM equipment. So, um, you know, the strength of the engine is, is quite amazing. The revs were, um, we were running them up to 14,300 RPM, but um, with these higher lift camshafts, we've dialed that back a little bit. We can safely run it at 14,000 RPM. Um, this one, I think, is set at 14.1. So it, we're certainly on the threshold of RPM revs for, um, for the camshafts we're using, but the rest of the engine is more than adequate to handle it. Um, Moving back, we're allowed to alter the rear sets. Um, so they're just some, uh, some ad fully adjustable rear sets and Wayne has them uh, quite forward to some of the riders. Uh, the chassis is adjusted through that rear shock um, and ride height adjustment so that we're using the Olin's TTX um, rear shock. Um, and yeah, we have different settings obviously for different tracks and, and that is um, yeah, under the rider's preference. So Wayne has his bike um, you know, a little bit flatter than uh, other riders in the past. Josh Waters, for instance, in the years gone by, liked his bikes reasonably steep. Wayne likes them a little bit shallower than that. Apart from that, though, the rear shock that we're using here, I think, is the same setting as what Josh Waters won the championship on in um, 2012. So uh, it's obviously working very well. 
Um, we've made a slight difference in the front suspension springs to suit Wayne, and, um, um, but apart from that, between the two riders over the, uh, over the two years of the two championship wins, um, hasn't been a huge change, uh, more so the geometry setting in the bike is, uh, is the difference, but apart from uh, the rest, um, is very similar. We use Yoshimura exhaust systems, of course, um, which uh, they're all full, full titanium systems and um, work extremely well. Um, and, and it's a combination of the Yoshimura exhaust, exhaust with the um, uh, exhaust system with the camshafts that we're able to get this sort of power that we have. And with, with all of that, we, we're housing and controlling the power with the Yoshimura ECU, which is called the EM Pro. It's a fully adjustable one. And uh, actually, I'll move around here with, uh, with Trev on the other side of the bike. Um, I'll just go through some of the controls here. Once you fit the Yoshimura ECU onto the machine, um, then, and you fit the wiring harness, you, the standard switch blocks stay intact, but it changes the modes and, and, and some of the switching of the, of the switch block. For instance, this, this, mat, this switch here, uh, which turns it from a, a, a two-way map switch, so we can have a wet map in one and your normal map in, uh, in map number two. The, um, the blinker switch here turns into a pit lane speed limiter, so pit lane, we adjust that to 40 kilometres an hour down pit lane. It'll retard the engine and hold it at that speed until the guys get to uh, pit lane exit, press the button and away you go, full power. Um, the rest of it on the back side here is the mode control switch that you have on your standard on your G6R1000. But um, it, this thing, uh, once the loom and the ECU is fitted, all that, that, that adjust now is not a power so much but a traction control or a spin control which is enabled by um, through the ECU and picks up the speed of the countershaft sprocket through the original um, speedo pickup that works off the off the front countershaft sprocket. So, all in all, um, we're using a lot of the OEM equipment to this bike, Yoshimura, with the design of their um, their wiring harness, their ECU picks up. So you can uh, uh, a rider can use or, or needs to use his original equipment to in order for the whole system to work, which is very cost effective and and uh, and works extremely well. Down on this side, you might notice some um, some shafts. A lot of people ask me what are these um, suspension pots. They sometimes uh, think they're an extra suspension unit. They're just a measuring device. They're a linear potentiometer that. We uh, use Motec um, data logging on the bike, um, and, and that picks up the suspension movement, acceleration rate, and helps us tune the bike in. We also run um, tyre temperature uh, uh, sensors on the rear, front wheel speed sensor on the front, which is tucked underneath the front guard here. So all of that is all tied up with the um, Motec data logging. Um, which is an extremely good system. This year in our, uh, our rules we were able to use um, speed shifters so we have hooked into the system we have a little um, pressure switch on the, uh, on the gear shaft right here so the, the rider now holds the throttle wide open and just pushes the gears down, it will cut the engine and allow the shift to happen without using the clutch. So it's a clutch shift that um, is very common on motorcycles um, today and, uh, and um, yeah, it works extremely well. We have speed sensors on the rear of the bike which is tucked underneath here. So we're measuring front and rear wheel speeds. Uh, we've got a lot of data acquisition on the bike to help us, uh, help us tune the thing in and also GPS which the antenna you might notice up on the front here so um, overall that's about the um, Australian spec superbike it's got all the necessary things we need at a, um, at a reasonably cost, cost effective level I feel so I suppose What's the changes for 2014 in the rules Phil? 2014 sees the bike pretty much exactly the same uh, except the camshafts, we have to use OEM camshafts, OEM um, spring retainers and OEM valve springs. So pretty much at the moment a competitor that has got a fully um, worked superbike like this should be able to just pull his camshafts out and the valve springs, get his standard cams, put them in and then go racing the same as what he had. So effectively we're going to trial that in ASBK only um, just to, and thus while we're doing that keeping an eye on what the FIM are doing they're still undecided how they're going to tone their rules down, but they're, uh, they're at the moment the FIM World Superbike spec is talking about having uh, a limited lift on the camshaft. They may go to, the talk at the moment is 10.5mm lift, we're using about 11.5mm lift at the moment, but for the trial for the moment to get, get things moving in Australia we thought it was best that we just go to standard OEM camshafts, start the year off and monitor it. And what standard camshaft is going to bring this 218 horsepower down to? Well, I'm not real sure yet, but uh, I suspect we'll probably come down to about 208, would be my guess. And how much if I was to come in with a blank cheque and ask you to build me one of these with, say, 
say about 10 horsepower down on Wayne's bike now? Oh look, it's it's not that expensive. I could supply less the data logging because that's all in addition. We just move that from bike to bike. Um, but less the data logging, this same bike and this spec now, and the same horsepower, supply the bike, build it, race glass, suspension, the whole thing, probably about 42, 44,000. And then how much is the data logging gear on top of that? Well, you know, we've got the, um, the Motec, which is really the top of the, um, top of the game in, in data logging equipment. It's reasonably expensive. We've probably got about twelve to fifteen thousand dollars worth of data on each bike, but uh, there is cheaper systems around, and, and nowadays there's more and more coming out, like portable snap-on things you can fit onto the back, and um, uh, and there is um, some quite cheap units around that you can pick up for probably um, fifteen hundred dollars actually. That'll do quite quite a good job but you know we're, we're me measuring the um, and analysing the exhaust gases as well as all the suspension all the engine data um, GPS we've got a lot going on in the data so yeah about 15 grand. Good on you thanks very much Phil. Thank you Trev.